was on the telly. I can hardly wait. Prepare yourselves to meet the candidates. Vicious Peeps and Coward, Flanagan and Blake, Chaplin Shaw, some mill and all away. Who will be Mr. London? Well, howdy, folks. Hello, good evening, and welcome to the show. <laughs> Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. Yes, folks, it's that time of the week and the show that brings you the best of the best, the Olympics of all talent shows. Solo singing. Sporting challenges. Mega brain puzzles. Rolling on ice. <laughs> eating marsupials' penises. And much, much more. <laughs> We've got live cameras in the contestants' dressing room and, of course, a diary room for all the juicy tidbits. Ladies and gentlemen... It's week five, and we're down to our last seven celebrity contestants. Sid Vicious, Bobby Moore, Noel Coward, Samuel Pepys, Geoffrey Chaucer, Bud Flanagan, and Charlie Chaplin. But which of them is the best? Which of the magnificent seven will eventually be crowned Mr. Mr. London? London! Toodle oh my loma, toodle oh my loma, toodle my eye. Any umbrellas, any umbrellas to mend today. Extraordinary how potent cheap music is. If you never concede a goal, you're going to win more games than you lose. Bobby, what are you talking about? I don't know. I'm just remembering advice. Well, could I dance to an harp small and sing the whist as any nightingale? One that I had drunk a draught of sweet wine. Aha, Mr. Vicious. Have you returned from being anarchic in the gentleman's room? Or on seeing your attire, shall I say, anarchic? Shut it, coward. I told you before, don't take the piss out suicides. Have they given us any booze yet? No, Sid. Bollocks. Oh, well, never mind those. Where the fuck's peepsies? Where do you think? To my lords in the morning, where I met with Captain Cuttance, then out to Charing Cross to see Major General Harrison hanged, drawn and quartered. He was presently cut down and his head and heart shown to the people, at which there was great shouts of joy. Thank you for sharing that with us, Mr Pepys, but will you go now, please? Other people need to be able to use the diary room. Right. So, what have we got lined up for tonight, Sophie? Well, Larry, tonight we will see our potential Mr Londons competing in the long jump. I hope it's only records and not bones that we see broken, Sophie. <laughs> also tonight, we honour one of the great pageants of the past with our remaining contestants, wait for it, parading in their swimwear. Whoa! Getting us underway, first up, a punk hero by the name of Mr John Simon Wretch, better known to us, of course, as Mr Sid Fisher. <laughs> Mr. Peeps? Yes, Mr. Coward? Have you just been in the diary room? I have. And are you now writing your diary? I am. Is it any better than the one you kept when you were alive? Follow-ups are notoriously difficult, you know. There's so much more competition these days. Adrian Mould, Anne Frank, Katie Price. After how many pages of writing, Mr. Peeps, do you pause to do something before returning to writing about what one has just done? If your intention is to draw me into a battle of wits, Mr. Coward, I must urge you to desist, for I feel bound to lose. Oh, I am more sparing with my wit than to offer it up as a weapon for a duel, Mr. Pepys. Wit ought to be a glorious treat like caviar, not spread about like marmalade. It is not the eyes of others that I am wary of, but of my own. Then why are you here, Mr. Coward? Because, Mr. Pepys, I am a sucker for a good cosy. I'm after Sid in the swimwear. Now, show me the deep end. How do I look? World class, no? World class. Au revoir. Doodle-doo, boys. What a plonker. 
Now, our next contestant is certainly witty, but is he pretty? Born in Teddington in 1899, he made his stage debut aged 11 and has written more than 50 plays, as well as hundreds of songs, poems and short stories. But what's the story with his shorts? What does he wear when he fancies a dip? Please put your hands together for Mr Noel Coward! Don't put your daughter on the stage, Mrs. Worthington. Don't put your daughter on the stage. The profession is overcrowded and the struggle is pretty tough. And admitting the fact she's burning to act, that isn't quite enough. Wow, no. If I may say so, you're looking pretty hot. Well, I do like to be beside the seaside. <laughs> you're obviously still a good mover. My height has always been an advantage. You should never trust a man with short legs. His brains are too near his bottom. Mm, talking of bottoms, could you give us another twirl? I think I've twirled enough for one life, don't you? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Mr Noel Coward! You're getting good at this, Peepsy. You can kick with both feet. Thank you, Mr Moore. Many times have I stood and watched men playing at football. Bobby Moore? Yeah? Full longer are your leggies and full lean. Fain would I do no mirtha, wist I how, Bobby. And over mirtha I am right now bethought to do new ease, and it shall cost a naught. Well, everybody, that was ridiculous. Oh, shut up. You enjoyed yourself. I'm at home on stage, Sid. I'm used to lying. That means the voting started. Yeah, well, the kind of people who'd vote for me don't watch this kind of shit. You're still here, aren't you, Sid? Yeah, I'm dead, but I'm not forgotten. So much better than the other way round, Sid. When did all human achievement become reduced to these vapid competitions and damnable lists? In my day, we never even had goal of the month. As time goes by, my friends, history is paradoxically becoming more easily digestible. I know what's driving us all nuts. We've got too used to being dead, thinking it's all over. It's not, is it? Let's forget about trying to be part of history and let's make some again. Yeah, I like the way you're talking, Bob. We need to end this competition, but on our terms. You mean fuck the system? Sort of, yeah. Kidnap. Kidnap Larry and Sophie. Then we can make demands. Who's next up on the long jump? Myself and Bud. Our best chance is when they pop their heads in for their well-done bollocks. And as soon as they do, right, Jeff, I want you to fake a heart attack. The second they come inside the door, I'll lock it. When I say go, stop all the acting shit and tie them up. Got it? Right, Bud, Jeff, get off to the jump in. Remember, stall for time. Why the fuck are you smiling, Peepsy? It's something good for my diary. Welcome back to part two. <laughs> now, will you please welcome on stage Mr. Bud Flanagan and Mr. Jeffrey Chaucer. <laughs> Gentlemen, welcome. Now, gents, uh, I hope you don't mind me pointing out that neither of you particularly has the physique of an athlete. <laughs> Least unlike a haunted fox cock a face, a presenter there was, and that a worthy man, that for the time that he first began to sell it and hoost the game ashore, with good, uh, smiling, uh, and courteous eye. Full worth he was he in the ratings war, uh, for there too had he networked no man more, as well in Christendom as in partiness, and he was ever honoured for his sliminess. Hmm. <laughs> I am an antichrist. I am an anarchist. Calm down, Sid. You've got to keep a cool head under pressure. Fuck it. I'll get easily excited. As this list of demands going, coward? We're doing very well, aren't we, Samuel? Getting along like a house on fire. We are, Mr. Coward. We are. Please, call me no, Samuel. 
I will. Noel? Just get a fucking move on and make sure that list covers every piece of shit on the box. Team London. All for one and one for all like the mask of fucking tears. Positions, gentlemen. Geoffrey, get over there. The rest of you look natural. I have never looked anything other than natural, especially when in the bath. Should, shall I lay down on my head? No! Just fall on the floor when you're having your heart attack. Oh, jollity. Everyone in position? Right. Now, just wait. Act normal. You remember what to do, Jeff. Fall upon the floor like one a gone mad. No. I'm in the zone, Sid. Sid, may I have something to say? Improvise, Samuel, improvise. If the motivation is there, whatever you say will be perfect. Shut up! They're coming. Right. Act normal. Well done, gentlemen. <laughs> Yet another good night. <laughs> How do you feel? Uh, don't forget, next week it's the Bond theme songs and the watercolour challenge. Larry, I'm dying for a skinny latte. See you uh, later, guys. Jeffrey, for fuck's sake. Oh, oh, my heart, my heart, it pounded like a vessel on the sea. <laughs> buggering, buggery, fuck, he's dying. Samuel, come on, improvise. Oh, dear. My life is slipping away. <gasps> the bar of life upon my rosy lippy is in very haste. <laughs> kiss of life. Give him the kiss of life. Bad quick. Nay, nay, not him. Bobby Moore. Bobby Moore. My ass. It's for your country, Bobby. For England. Mr. Chaplin, do you know where Larry and Sophie are? Charlie, why have you come to the diary room? Now, Mr. Larry and Miss Sophie, you will read what my friend Peepsy is holding up in front of you. The sooner you get it done, the sooner you can leave. You fuck it up, I will hurt you. Understood? Good. Right. Action! Hello? I'm Larry Bosworth. Oi, fucking cheer up a bit. Ow! Please be gentle, Sid. Sex pistols don't do gentle. Look into the camera and imagine somebody you love is in the audience. Hello, I'm Larry Bosworth. And I'm Sophie Cowell. You'll recognise us as being hosts of the popular game show for dead celebrities, Mr London. When we crowned our Mr. London, we planned to follow this soon with Miss London. And then to begin selling the format abroad. Mr. Dubrovnik. Miss Lisbon. Mr. Shanghai. Miss Mumbai. Uh, but we've had enough, haven't we, Sophie? Yes, Larry, we have. I'm a sexist bigot. I'm a cokehead. And, and Mr. Mr. London, London is, is shit. shit. We are truly sorry for being such assholes. And we would advise you to boycott the following programmes. Cook my house. Eat in the sun. Sell my basement. Your main course was better than your starter. Let's all laugh at their DNA test. Watch the old woman drive in the wrong direction. And greed or no greed. And cut. Nice. Yeah, very nice indeed. That'll go out tonight instead of the results. And if the producers don't agree, then I'll go cut off your little piggy fingers. Can we go now, please? Just hold your little horses. Oi, oi, where'd you get that fizz, Charlie? My, oh, my, it's Champagne Charlie. How utterly wonderful. It's like the Silver Jubilee. Let's celebrate, boys. You said we could go when we'd done this. We're, we're midway through an extension. I need to pay the builders. Shut up. I'm going to the Ivy tonight and playing golf tomorrow. Look, you can stay in my house in Barbados. You too, Bosworth. Gentlemen, I feel a toast is in order. To London. To London.
to London. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, dear, I feel like a chuckle. Most peculiar. Oh, oh, oh. My leg is all full of treachery. It's the champagne. It's fucking good shit, this. I don't want to be an emperor. That's not my business. I should like to help everyone if possible. Jew, Gentile, black man, white. We all want to help one another. Human beings are like that. However, I've worked hard in this competition, and I'm in it to win it. It's always the quiet ones. I was given the champagne in the diary room. It was clearly intended to knock us all out so that they could come in here and rescue you. But I've second-guessed them, and I have other plans. Does this really mean that much to you? It would appear so. You've got a statue in Leicester Square! What have I got? Oh, shut up, you little shit. Our fame was a byproduct of our talent. Don't you bloody well see? We shouldn't be here at all. Now I want you to phone the producers with a list of my demands. Why can't you call them yourself? Because I wish to preserve my silence. It's what made me who I am. Hmm. Now do we know that gun's real? You don't. But do you feel lucky? Well, do you? Punk. Now phone the fucking producer. It's, it's Mr. Mr. London! Welcome back to the results show. Well, earlier on, we saw them in their swimwear and the long jump. But who did and who didn't do it for you? <laughs> it's time to find out. Oh, this is astonishing, Larry. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a statement from the producers. There is one of the contestants here for whom not a single vote has been cast to remove them from the show. Due to this overwhelming nationwide support, we are to crown our Mr. London six shows earlier than scheduled. Shut up. Just get to the point, Sophie. Ladies and gentlemen, born on the 16th of April, 1889, our undisputed Mr. London, will you please welcome Mr. Charlie Chaplin? Well, Charles Spencer Chaplin, this must have come as a great surprise. <laughs> Charlie, let's have a look at your best bits. <laughs> And now, please welcome on stage the creator of our show to present Charlie with his award. Ladies and gentlemen, Charlie Chaplin! For the last time, then, the words of Hubert Gregg. If you enjoy the show, then why not get a Mr. London for where you live? Bring your local graveyard back to life. I hope you don't feel that was too extreme, boys. Mr. Coward, would you mind perhaps proposing a toast or something? I don't think we've too much time left. Let's drink to the spirit of gallantry and courage that made a strange heaven out of unbelievable hell. And let's drink to the hope that one day this country of ours, which we love so much, will find dignity and greatness and peace again. Oh, dear. Fuck it. They are heroes for now history, martyrs to the cause. I welcome them with all their flaws. Some of them are charming, some of them you'll hate. Who will you decide to know? 